It's now time for member statements. Recognize the member for Toronto St. Paul. Good morning, Speaker. Today on International Women's Day, I recognize our St. Paul's women. You have disproportionately shouldered the brunt of this pandemic. It is why I am committed to a feminist recovery. Our frontline health care workers, you have continuously shown tenacity and courage throughout this ordeal. Essential caregivers, again primarily women, I've spoken with you. I know the weight of your care work. Our seniors in our rental apartments, many of you live alone. I thank you for our phone calls where you often remind me to dress warmly and keep fighting for you. I will. I stand with women with disabilities in St. Paul's. Many of you are injured workers, holding it down for your families, doing your absolute best. I stand with our single moms, desperate for childcare, with women and children experiencing homelessness, who simply want the dignity of a safe place to sleep. I stand with women without children. You are no less important. I give gratitude to our teachers and education workers for your tireless work. Our women business owners, essential workers, local farmers, artists and creatives, I am so deeply grateful for you. You bring St. Paul's to life. You give us color, our feeling, and our vibe. To all of you, I will continue to fight for your right to housing, pay equity, paid sick days, your safety at work, your physical and mental health on International Women's Day and beyond. I stand boldly in this House because of you and for you, and I am deeply thankful. Happy International Women's Day. Thank you. So the member statement, the member for Willowdale. Thank you very much, Speaker. I rise today in honour of International Women's Day. Although women in Ontario have made great strides for equality in the boardrooms, political arenas and hockey rinks, they continue to earn less, face harassment, discrimination and, in worst cases, violence. Almost three years ago, a man drove a rented van down the sidewalks of Young Street in Willowdale, killing 10 people and injuring 16. This heinous, cowardly act of violence was a deliberate attack aimed at women in my community. One of the eight women killed that day was 31-year-old Anne-Marie D'Amico. In the wake of the tragedy, Anne-Marie's family created the Anne-Marie D'Amico Foundation as a way to find light in the darkest of times and to honour her memory. The Anne-Marie D'Amico Foundation works tirelessly to create new spaces for abused women and children in the North York Women's Shelter. Of the 10 new spaces they created this past year, all were quickly taken by victims of domestic abuse, abuse that in many cases, Speaker, was made worse by the pandemic, where vulnerable women already living in unstable conditions were being trapped in a house with their abuser. Speaker, as we celebrate International Women's Day and the contributions made by women in our lives and communities, let us also acknowledge and thank organizations like the Anne-Marie D'Amico Foundation for the work they have done for victims of domestic abuse and let us all join the fight to end violence against women everywhere. Thank you. Member statements? Member for Windsor West. Speaker, how do you summarize the life of someone like Walter Gretzky in the short time that I have? First thought is, you can't. But as my father-in-law pointed out, Walter's motto was, there's no such thing as can't, and so I will give it my best shot. Wally had a deep love of the game of hockey, a love he passed on not only to his children, but other kids too. He encouraged and nurtured the love of the game by instilling in others an ethic of hard work, determination, and confidence in oneself. Much like hockey, Wally had a deep love for his community and his country. He was generous with his time, whether through raising money for the numerous charitable organizations he was involved in, serving meals to those in need at a local church, chatting with or singing to anyone nearby, both adults and children alike. Wally opened up his home to anyone that knocked on the door, leading them into the basement to enjoy his sports memorabilia collection. He was honoured with the Brantford Citizen of the Year Award, is an inductee to the Brantford Walk of Fame, a member of the Order of Ontario, and a member of the Order of Canada. Wally carried the Olympic torch and received honorary degrees from three universities. While he achieved much in his lifetime, one might say his most notable accomplishment was what he gave to others, kindness and the way he made others feel. Whether family or someone he'd never met before, Wally always wanted you to feel listened to, 
included and appreciated, like you were the great one. On Saturday, Wally was laid to rest. A crowd of people in hockey jerseys and his kids tapping their hockey sticks lining the street outside the church to show their respect. In my house, he was Uncle Walter. In Brantford, he was Lord Mayor. To many, he was Wally. To our country, he was Canada's hockey dad. His legacy will live on in every arena, backyard rink, and memory of those who had the pleasure of meeting him. Every time we hear a stick tap on the boards, it will be Walter Gretzky telling us there is no such thing as can't. Rest well, Wally. Thank you very much. Member statements? Member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. The government is working to uh, support the health and well-being of Whitby seniors during COVID-19. They recently announced funding provided to Whitby seniors' active living centres in downtown Whitby and Brooklyn will help local seniors stay safe and socially connected through virtual and remote programs. Speaker, this year's investment focuses on interactive telephone-based group programming, online educational programs such as tax clinics, technology assistance, health and wellness, and COVID information. Speaker, given the social isolation that COVID-19 has brought to many seniors, it's important that we look to programs that will keep them safe and connected. And the government's significant investment in seniors' active living centres will help Whitby's older adults stay virtually engaged with their friends, families and communities while combating social isolation during the pandemic. Speaker, Whitby Seniors Active Living Center programming will provide support for older adults and their well-being by keeping them active, socially connected within their own communities. What's clear, Speaker, is that the government remains absolutely committed to the safety, independence and well-being of Whitby Seniors. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The next member's statement, the member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker, and today is International Women's Day. And Speaker, I'm going to say first that women across this province deserve respect and appreciation for their work, care, and sacrifice throughout this pandemic. We have seen women on the front lines across fields and jurisdictions, but we know that many of the vulnerable and essential worker jobs are predominantly female, and many of those women are racialized and further marginalized. Consider the never-ending work of caregivers and personal support workers, PSWs who have been on the front lines in long-term and seniors' care, working with vulnerable neighbours in their homes who can't get fair wages or adequate tra training and who work relentlessly without fair or safe staffing levels. We call our health care workers heroes, but many of them are women, and they have had to fight for PPE and respect from the beginning. Education workers are predominantly female, and we've seen how diminished, disrespected, and exploited they have been by this government during this pandemic. And why? Because they cost money to employ, Speaker. Also, they work in a field with children. We've seen how poorly regarded they have been over this past year. Women work in every field, and we need to ensure there are clear paths to employment, training, and fair compensation for them. We've heard that we are in a she session, and there will not be the economic recovery we all need without a feminist recovery. This government has to reverse the cuts to shelters, rape crisis centers, women's services, and programs. Skills training, accessible employment supports, pay equity, childcare, and paid sick days all must be a part of this government's plan if they really want to raise the status of women in this province, and that is hoping that they do. On this International Women's Day, we must commit to ensuring a brighter and safer path ahead for all women. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Orléans. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and happy International Women's Day. Recently, the cities of Ottawa, Brampton, and Barrie have all concluded investigations into serious cases of workplace violence and sexual harassment by members of council. In these cases, the most severe penalty that can be imposed is the, is the suspension of pay for 90 days. Municipal councillors can have their seats vacated for poor attendance or for spending too much on their election night uh, parties, but not for sexually harassing or inappropriately touching their employees or co-workers. In Ottawa, the Integrity Commissioner found that councillor committed incomprehensible incidents of harassment against staff over many years. In Brampton, the Integrity Commissioner found the councillor engaged in unnecessary, unwelcome, and unwanted sexual touching. 
Despite these findings, Mr. Speaker, these councillors remain in office. Brampton's integrity commissioner said she was displeased there was no avenue that allowed for the councillor's immediate removal for office. And in Ottawa, City Council passed a resolution requesting the government make these changes to allow for this. The minister's response, Mr. Speaker, was to reject the idea outright. I've been working with stakeholders for some time and will soon be bringing forward a private member's bill that would allow a municipal council seat to be vacated in cases of workplace violence and harassment. I call on all members of the legislature to support this proposal and pass the changes swiftly to bring greater accountability to Ontario's local leaders. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today is International Women's Day, and I want to wish all the amazing women and girls here in the legislature, in my riding of Carleton, across the province, including my amazing staff, as well as my mother, grandmother, and sister, a happy International Women's Day. I'd like to take a moment to highlight the accomplishments of some of the amazing women of Carleton this past year, including Heather Larmer, who was recognized as one of five Canadian professionals under 40 by Canadian Defence Review magazine. Estella Aversa, who made a fantastic video thanking frontline workers. Liz Elwood, who recently opened up her business, Mavericks Donut Company, in Stittsville. Katie Zhu, who was the 2020 Special Olympics Ontario Athlete of the Year. Amanda Knox, who was a 2020 Ottawa Book Awards finalist. Brenda Miller, who won the Melvin Jones Fellowship Award. Charlene Burnside, who spent hours making fabric masks for her community of Richmond. Kiara Dixon, who performed It's Corona Time on YouTube for episode two of Kids Around the World. Danielle Barabe Boussier, who was the 2020 Canada's Photographer of the Year in the Craftsman of Photographic Arts designation. The South Carlton Girls Curling Team, who were the National Capital Secondary Athletes Association champions in 2020. Mr. Speaker, the list goes on and on, but unfortunately, I'm running out of time. It's truly an honor to represent such amazing women and girls in Carlton. The future of Carleton, Ottawa, and Ontario is certainly bright. Happy International Women's Day. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, over the past months, I have raised the need for a faster, more comprehensive vaccine rollout for Ontario and called on the Premier to commit to an equitable distribution of vaccines. Today, I want to tell this House about a constituent of Scarborough Southwest in hopes that my call will finally be answered. Thomas Cooper bravely served with Bomber Command in the Royal Canadian Air Force as a member of the 408 Goose Squadron. For, uh, Bomber Command faced a death rate of 46%, and Mr. Cooper designed bearings for aircraft engines for SKF Canada as, and was involved in the Avro Aero project. His daughter, Catherine, contacted us. She is worried for her father and has no central place to get information as to when her father can get vaccinated. While other parts of the province get vaccines, Mr. Cooper's family is left in the dark feeling hopeless. Catherine asks, why is Scarborough being so neglected? It's been a hotbed for COVID-19 infection. Surely, if the desire is to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in this province, the people of Scarborough should be a high priority. Mr. Speaker, individuals outside of Scarborough can get vaccinated. The former Premier can get vaccinated. And that's great. They should be getting vaccinated. But so should Mr. S Mr. Cooper and the many others who have been waiting patiently for months in Scarborough. As someone who served his country and answered the call at the age of 19, Mr. Cooper deserves better. Mr. Speaker, Scarborough Southwest deserves better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Kitchener, Conestoga. Well, thank you very much, Speaker. Last week, I had the chance to virtually welcome the Solicitor General of Waterloo Region for a roundtable with some of the organizations who combat human trafficking and support victims in my community. While we may not see it, human trafficking is happening all across the province, in our small towns and our urban centres. It's a horrible reality, but my community is no exception, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank all the attendees for sharing their feedback on our government's new bill, the Combating Human, Traffic Combating human Trafficking Act, which is the first of its kind in Canada. It is a real honour to be part of a government that has, made, um, that has made putting an end to this heinous crime and the protection of victims a priority. It was just last year that our comprehensive $307 million anti-human trafficking strategy was launched, and we are now making changes to give law enforcement additional tools to prevent and deter human trafficking. As I heard during our discussions, 
These new measures will build on the ongoing collaboration in my region, providing, uh, providing clarity and, importantly, to raise awareness about the risk of human trafficking. As a member of this House, we all have the responsibility to shed light on the fact that this is happening in our communities, to raise awareness about the prevention of this crime, and to help the survivors and the people who support them. I look forward to continuing this ongoing conversation with the experts in my community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Burlington. Thank you so much, Speaker. Speakers, we celebrate International Women's Day. I'd like to recognize some of the incredible women in Burlington. Local leaders like Colleen Mulholland from Burlington's Community Foundation, Anita Cassidy from Economic Development, Andrea Dodd from our Restaurant Association, Carla Nell from Burlington's Chamber of Commerce, and Judy Worsley for Aldershot BIA. In our long-term care and seniors' homes, there's Sharon Bailey from Burl Oak Long-Term Care, Sherry Levy-Abraham from Bethany Residence, and Marie Clark from Wellington Park. Women who connect people with jobs like Lisa Rosado from the Centre for Skills Development, Kelly Hoey and Michelle Murray from Hayek, and Kelly Duffin from Goodwill, the Amity Group. Women supporting our kids, including Alison Brindle from Learning Disabilities of Halton Hamilton, Cindy Ionson from Woodview Mental Health and Autism Services, Andrea Grabanek from Halton's Public School Board, Lita Berry from Burlington's Libraries, and Janice Robinson and Lynn Barker from Halton Children's Aid. Women like Lisa Collar from Halton's Ent Ent Environmental Network, Lisa Lanzinski from Wellington Square's Mailbag Program, Amy Shear Schnur from Burlington Green, and Bridget. Sonia from Nouveau Networks. I'd be remiss if I didn't men mention my four children, Jennifer, Courtney, Megan, and Taylor. They bless me and inspire me not only today, but every day. You amaze me with your intelligence, compassion, humor, drive, and capacity for unconditional love. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning. It is now time for oral questions. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. There is a point of order by the member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. I seek unanimous consent for the House to observe a moment of silence to pay tribute to the contributions and memory of Walter Gretzky. Member for Windsor West is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to observe a moment of silence to pay tribute to the memory of Walter Gretzky. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. I'll ask members to rise. Thank you very much. Members may take their seats.